Good morning, friends. I trust you are all doing great. Welcome to this worship experience. Great. Let us pray. Put your hands together and close your eyes. Good. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Our rock and our defender, we praise you. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. Lord, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. Meet with us in a new way today and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So are you ready to dance? All right, come on, let's go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say, me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that I love him. I just want to
loves me so, loves me so, loves me so. Jesus loves me so, loves me so, loves me so. Jesus loves me so. So my 
Praise the Lord, children. That hallelujah needs to be louder than that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was an awesome time of praise. And now we're going to sing the song titled Worthy of It All. As we close our eyes and hope, open our hearts to God, I want us to worship Him, recognizing that He is the King of Kings and that He is the Lord of Lords and that He owns everything that we have and there's nothing we can give Him that He doesn't already have. Father, we worship You. Hallelujah. Amen.
Good morning and happy Sunday, all of you. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's say a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Sunday. We ask that you breathe upon us afresh in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get the work done again this morning. Our five items, your Bible, your fresh fire, your book, your pen, your pencil, your offering. I hope you have everything with you. Now, our last topic said DDD. Can you remember what that means? DDD. It says decision, determination, and destiny. This works in hand together decision, determination, and destiny. What decision are you making? How are you going about your decision? Do you just make decision because you want to make decision? Or you consider your determination, you consider your destiny, you consider what the decision can be or can bring out before you make any de this, uh, decision. That, that was all about last week. Now, today's topic says surely, surely. When you say the word surely, it means truthfully, steadfastly, surely. Yes, it will be. Now, let's take our memory verse. Our memory verse is from uh, the book of Habakkuk 2, 3. It says, put it in writing because it is not yet time for it to come true. But the time is coming quickly and what I show you will come true. It may seem slow in coming, but wait for it. It will surely take place and it will not be delayed another version of the bible says it may tarry but surely it will come to pass hallelujah yes now in the last few days we have been talking about doors and the different things doors can represent or mean to different people to us as christian now I'll just paraphrase that. A door can be or represent an opportunity. Yes, a door can represent an opportunity or can be an opportunity. A door can be or represent distraction. Yeah, you may see the door open and it's all about distraction. Now, that's another way. A door can represent or mean a trap from the devil. Yes, that is what another door can mean. And another door can be open just for a good relationship. Now, all of these doors, with whatever they may be representing in different time, with different people, in all of this, we need the ability for discernment. Uh, 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 uh. We need the ability for discernment. Doors can be or represent several things at every time to different people. But we need the ability for discernment, we need to be able to decide which door functions well, which door should I go into, which door should I not open at all, which door should I walk through. We need the Holy Spirit, we need the, 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 the assignment so that we don't fall prey, so that we don't get into the doors of destruction, so that we don't get into the doors that is meant as a trap. We need God, we need the Holy Spirit, we need discernment. Now today, we look at the door that God sometimes opened to us so as to have a sneak peek into the future. Like you peeping. Okay, God, what do you get there for me? Do you have something there? And you peep into it and you come back. Sneak peek into the future. Now, God, because of his love and care for us, sometimes shows us a little of what he has in store for us. You want to know why? In order to keep our faith in him growing stronger and bigger. Sometimes he just show it to us so that we, we are in alignment with what he is doing. He shows us through the door. He shows us a bit of it so that we can know what is cooking for us or for our future. Now, that's, if we know that, it can help our faith. It can help our, our I believe becomes stronger and bigger in him. Now, you know, sometimes when you sneak into a 
you peep into it. It doesn't allow us to peep all of it so that we don't get scared. So you don't see, my God, God, this is what you have in store for me. I'm not going to be able to handle it. So it doesn't allow us many times to see all of it. But we just peep into a bit of it and we keep going now. Peeping into it or having a sneak peek into what the future holds does not say it is coming at that time he has shown it to you. Sometimes he shows it to you, but he wants you to still hold on. He, he brings you through the door slowly, bit by bit, so that even you, you don't bite yourself, so that even you, you don't get overjoyed and just like kick off everything and, uh, or smash everything or spoil everything. So you get to peep into it and it takes you or takes us slowly through the door. And that's why that part of the Bible, uh, that Bible passage we read up is saying that, write it down. Now, when you write it down, put it down in writing because it is not yet time for it to come. Put it down. When you put it down, it's for recalling. When you put it down, you can always go back down and, and say, oh, this is what God has in store for me. Oh, this is what I have seen. This is what is going to be. This is what is coming. And that can help pump your faith. That can help keep you going. That can help hold you first or hold you uh, firm there, waiting on God because you know that that Bible passage says, Surely, that's Habakkuk 2, 3. It says, surely it will be, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. No matter how it looks like, no matter what is happening around you, whatever God has shown to you as a sneak peek, whatever God has made you see that, oh, that's what I have for you. It will come to pass. At church, I hear a lot about God's promises, but it seems like a lot of the good stuff in the Bible, like, healing or having peace when life is crazy is for preachers or important church people. Is that stuff for me too? Can I be honest? I mean, yeah, that's what we're here for, right? I kind of feel the same way Amber feels. You do? Whenever I hear a promise from God I can't relate to, I think it only applies to those super Christians, not just regular church goers. No, 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 no. God's promises are for anybody that, wait, What's a super Christian? You know, their Bibles come with capes, they fight crime, they quote scriptures, they say grace before they read a book, stuff like that. You know someone who says grace before they read a book? Yeah, my aunt. She says reading is like eating for the brain. Thank you, Jesus, for a tale of two stays. May you bless it twice. Once for each city. <laughs> wow, your aunt is a super Christian. <laughs> you should meet my uncle. Anyways. Are you sure this stuff is for anybody? Yes, anybody. What if I make a ton of mistakes? Everybody makes a ton of mistakes. No, I'm serious. My mistakes weigh a ton. Okay, maybe that is a lot of mistakes. Hmm. So it can't apply to me, right? No, it does. Nothing's changed. Because everyone's mistakes weigh a ton. 1 John chapter 5 says that if we pray for anything that's God's will for us, he will hear us and we'll have it. Seriously? Seriously. And it doesn't say that you only have to be a preacher or a prophet or a super Christian. As a matter of fact, in Acts chapter 10, Peter says it pretty plainly. He says, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. You're blowing my mind. <laughs> God is pretty mind-blowing. Just check out the prodigal son. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt sorry for him. He ran to his son. The prodigal son made a ton of mistakes. Yet, his father still welcomed him with open arms. He even ran to give him a hug before he got to the door. 
Oh, I remember that episode. Even though he had a pass, he still got to have a party. Exactly. <laughs> okay, I get it. So God's promises can be for anybody, even the important church people. His word is forever alive. It will be. Yes, it will be. But it may tarry. Even though it tarries, it will come to pass. And that's the essence of you writing it down. Now, the process of, it, the process of you writing it down, I want to believe is the process of you waiting. Yeah, it's the process of you waiting. When you write it down, you, are, you write it down. Then you go back to it some days and look at it and say, oh, wow. Okay, this is what God has shown me. This is what God is saying. And you have a good feeling about what he has said to you. You have a good feeling that God has got your back. And so, even if you see that it's not coming to be, because you have written it down, you will recall it and say, no, I know that it will come to pass because the Bible has told me that even if it tarries, it will come to pass. Now let's read that Habakkuk 2, 3 completely. Put it in writing because it is not yet time for it to come true. But the time is coming quickly. And what I show you will come through or will come true. It may seem slow in coming, but wait for it. It will certainly take place and it will not be delayed. That's the word of God. That's the word of God that cannot be changed. That's the word of God that is steadfast. That's the word of God that is firm. That's the word of God that is true. That's the word of God that has been tested. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. And that's why the topic says surely. Yes, surely. Oh, on you don't have to doubt it. It will come to pass. So I want to encourage us this morning. Whatever God has said to you, whatever he has shown to you, whatever he, he, he has made you realize, and it seems to you as, as if, oh, it's not coming to be. I, 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 can't even, I can't even get there. I'm not getting there. Yes, he has shown me this. Yes, I have seen this. Yes, this door has been opened to me. I have peeped into it. But it's not looking like it's coming. Hey, come on now. I'm here to encourage you this morning that you should keep holding on. Hold on, hold on, hold on to that word of God that says, though it may tarry, but it will come to pass. Though it may, it may shake. <laughs> Though it may look like, ah, it's not going to be. But no, it is going to be. Surely it will come to pass. Even if it tarries. Even if it looks like it's not working. Hey, God is working for you. Behind closed doors. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing for you to know that mm, God has got my back. God has got me. He's walking behind closed doors. For me, he's, he's cooking it all up for me. Why? Because he has shown me. He has, he has given me a peep into it. I know what he is up to. I know what he is about to do for me. I know what he is going to do for me. And so, I'll keep holding on. I'll keep believing him. I'll keep staying right there until the very end, until I receive it on my hand, until I see it become a reality. Hallelujah. God's word is sure. It is, it, it is tested. It is true. It is sharp. It will surely come to Pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, it may give you a peep into it. Yes, it may look like it's coming slowly. It's not coming. It will come. As long as you can hold on there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. His word is sure. His word is yea and amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Uh, our prayer is a kind of song. 
Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult. Nothing is difficult for God to do. Do you ever want to ask God for something, but you're not sure if it's worth his time? All the time. But it's mostly a, should I ask God to help me find enough spare change in my backpack to help me buy that ice cream at lunch, you know? And do you? Because I hope you do. After all, ice cream is a gift from heaven. It is, and I do. I like to pray about everything. You mean to tell me I could pray about everything, no matter what it is? That's right. Oh, I know, that reminds me of a Bible story. You know, the one with the lady? You gotta... She prays? You gotta be more specific. Uh, uh, Kara, Kara, what's her name? Um, Hannah? No, that's not it. Oh, I know, it's Hannah. Seriously? In First Samuel chapter one? That's the one. She wanted a son so badly that she sat outside the tent. Oh, about we're just gonna show you. Great idea. Kara, roll the clip. She knelt right there and prayed to God. She begged him to give her a child and promised she would dedicate the boy to the Lord, saying, a razor shall never come upon his head. Eli happened to be sitting nearby. At first, he did not understand what she was doing there, but then she explained. Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. Hannah wanted a son, so she prayed about it. Because she knew that her request was worth God's time. Yeah, and asking for a child is kind of major. And her son Samuel grew up to be one of the greatest prophets in history. That's true. So how do I know if my prayers are worth God's time? What if they're too small? Want to know a secret? Yeah. God cares about all of our prayer requests. There's no request that's too small. Are you sure? Totally. God wants to be in a relationship with us. In a relationship? Uh, not in a relationship, in a relationship. You know, friends. Yeah, yeah, of course he does. You know, the way I see it, prayer is like talking with God. Sometimes there's major requests. Or it's like talking to a friend. Exactly. In Exodus 33, 11, it says, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Whoa. And that's the kind of relationship I want to have with God. And most importantly, that's the kind of relationship God wants to have with us. Which means talking to him about everything. Including whether or not you have enough spare change for ice cream at lunch. It's so good! We can talk to God about anything, whether or not it's something as simple as trying to find a parking spot at a football game. God loves us and wants to be close friends with us. So hearing from you... God's close friend. ...is never a waste of time. There's no prayer too small. His word is forever alive. If he has shown you, if he has told you, if he has said it, he will do it. So just rest assured that God has got your back. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, that's it. God has got your back. And he will let you down because after all, he's God Almighty. He's our Father. We are his children. And we are his favorite people. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes. When you go out there, be safe. Wash your hands on the running water. Do not put your hands in your mouth, in your nose. Make sure you are keeping safe and you are eat, eating healthy. Until I come your way again next Sunday, 
It's a bye-bye from me to you. Be good. See you again.